Hello everyone, welcome to the floating head of Simon TV. I thought this was pretty funny. This is Christopher Luxon, New Zealand's new Prime Minister. He's currently leading a trade delegation to Japan and the vestigial media couldn't resist taking a crack at him. While there, he made a flippant remark that proved injudicious. He described the business leaders who had accompanied his predecessor, the Labour Party Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, on similar trade missions as C-listers. His comments happened to be entirely true. Ardern was notoriously anti-business and in six short years devastated the New Zealand economy. The business leaders who accompanied her were the C-listers, as business people with integrity wouldn't be seen with her to insulate their reputations. Of course, the C-list comment became the headline with the far-left vestigial media reporting it breathlessly and endlessly, overlooking the positive trade and security arrangements Luxon's delegation had agreed with their Japanese counterparts. It even caught the attention of Ardern's successor as Labour Party leader, Chris Hipkins. Here's the man pictured here wearing a burqa, standing beside the oleaginous Fijian agitator, Chanoil Lal. Hipkins doesn't normally wear a burqa, I'd superimpose that to spare your sensibilities. I, I did this because Chris Hipkins is openly ginger. Out and proud, openly ginger. He seldom even wears a hat to, to cover his shame. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to take his burqa off to show you what he looks like. Uh, if you're at all squeamish, please turn away now. What you're about to see is full frontal gingenuity. Hipkins often attends ginger pride parades. At Pride events, he's all by himself at the head of the ginger section, for forlornly hoping for the day other ginger kind will join him. Okay, sorry about that, folks. This is his true visage, and I'm sorry that he looks like that. Um, that's enough of that. Let's put his burqa back on. Okay, done. He's back in his in his burqa and it's uh, safe to look again. Hipkins felt obligated to defend Adern's tap, tattered reputation and turned to the X platform in order to do so. Uh, writing, he wrote this, um, Christopher Luxon is an A-grade expert on talking other people down. But when travelling abroad, New Zealand politicians have a long bipartisan history of talking NZ up. He's the Prime Minister, he should start acting like it. Well, when I say he wrote this, it might have been written for him. Hipkin's mum was employed as a teacher in the New Zealand excuse for an education system, so he himself is probably illiterate. Either way, the statement is attributed to him. And the problem he has with it is that this supposed bipartisan history doesn't seem to apply to Ardern, who gave a speech bagging out New Zealand to an audience in Bologna just three months ago. Have a listen to what she said. The transition was rapid and bumpy. Unemployment reached as high as 10% and 25% for Māori, the indigenous people of New Zealand. Government debt levels were also diagnosed as unsustainable. A significant cut in government spending was announced, which particularly hit those on government support, such as unemployment benefits or those who were solo parents. I was 11 years old when what was known as the mother of all budgets came out. It was so controversial, I even recall seeing a cartoon as a child that depicted the then Minister of Finance standing over a large cauldron of soup with a child begging for more. One commentator at the time stated that the budget formalised the stratification of New Zealand society. Now, through such periods of political complexity, sometimes 
The lens of a child is telling. My recollection of this time is not of the political machinations, but the impact on people. I remember the children in my school without shoes as certain industries closed. I recall the spread of illnesses that are associated with poverty. I remember a neighbor's son taking his own life. So even more charming diplomacy from Adern. But according to Chris Hipkins, the leader of the Labour Party and monument to vaginal dryness, the rules once again don't apply to his friend and mentor Jacinda Ardern. Not just our worst ever Prime Minister, a leading candidate for the worst New Zealander who has ever lived. Ladies and gentlemen, be warned. Ginger kind are devious and not to be trusted. Never elect one. Thank you for watching. See you next time.